to welcome to our pulpit Reverend Gary Johnson, one of our premier missionaries, a man of God who has served the Lord for many years on the foreign field, especially in Kenya. And tonight he shares with us something about bringing in the sheaves. <laughs> thank you, Pastor. Thank you very much. I want to say thanks to your pastor for letting me come. It was supposed to be last week, and he let me move it till this week, and I, I am very grateful uh, that he did. I'll tell you, if you ever want somebody to, you just ought to take a pencil whenever someone wants to give excuses. I'm looking out over a, a Mennonite couple here, and boy, I'll tell you, whenever he was one of the first members on the SUM team, and he had, oh, I, I guess the, probably the list could be, I, I don't know, maybe longer than this, why he just could not possibly go. And I said, my goodness, I, I don't even know, should I even say any more about it? Jim says, Jim Buer says, oh, don't worry, Gary, he's harmless. He, 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 he probably wants to really go. And boy, oh boy, what a job they did. Went down to Peru and Bolivia. Uh, how many times did you go down there? Twice. Oh, what a job. Still, the work is going on down there where Jim and Daniel Moyer was able to go out there. Oh, I'll, I'll never forget those, those wonderful days. And then, the, because that he went on and didn't use excuses, and he came uh, back, he met a girl that had poison ivy, and oh my goodness, why we won't go into that. And they ended up marrying shortly, or I don't know, they married after that. And then they had a little girl, her name was Danielle. I'll never forget being at Faith Seminary and having this little girl tug my pants as we had the boot camp. What a delight it was to see her and go down to Bolivia, and, or down to Peru, I think it was. And then, what do you think? The Lord wasn't finished with her just on that trip. Later, she and Sarah... Uh, said, we want to come to Africa and we want to serve with you there. Daniel, Danielle, would you please stand? I know, I don't make too many, but I, there's my girl. I tell you what, if, if I ever wanted to steal someone's daughter, that's, that's, that's the one, I tell you, right there. Uh, I tell you, what a delight she was. and she, it, she was not hard at all to please her out on the field. She and Sarah did such a wonderful job. I am thrilled to death that my little man here that, that uh, Dick Whitbeck loved so much, he went and called him and told him to get yourself up here, and there he did. Isn't that great? I thank the Lord for, 
for all the ones, you know, years ago, if you didn't go on a some team, boy, you just wasn't anybody. I tell you, um, Carolyn Mackin found that out, you know. I just kept trying and trying and trying to get her to come, and, and she, I don't know, she just kept getting excuses. Anyway, she's here tonight. I'm just thrilled to death. Maybe one day she still will go. But you know what? I, 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 I'm, I'm, a, I'm a happy, thrilled uh, missionary that is thankful to the Lord that he called me into his service. And I'm thankful that I came with the independent board. I'm going to ask Keith Coleman to come at this time because once I get in mind, boys, he, I, he better never interrupt me, you know. Uh, no, not really. But, uh, you know, it's, it's like on the news, all of a sudden it says alert or this message has just come in. Well, I can tell you about Africa or about Asovia, but my goodness, there's so many things happen in other places. Wow, he can really dish it out, can he? <laughs> Be prepared. This is the 80th year for the Independent Board for Presbyterian Foreign Missions, and we'll have a lot more to say about it as the year progresses. Uh, reading some of uh, Dr. Machen's uh, writings, he had mentioned one time a person came to him in 1927 and asked him, he said, uh, is not Christianity in the West on the wane? And he said, well, if you mean Christianity as far as something that man has raised and by man's ambitions and, and things like that, he says, it probably would fail. But he says, it's God's work. And so the independent board being 80 years old, that's kind of interesting. But God's work was going on long before that. And we pray that we're continuing to do God's work and that as we stand in the way, God will use us in, in whatever fashion he has. Uh, we've had over 300 missionaries commissioned, and Gary and Pat have served uh, admirably in, in a number of places, and you've followed them. Uh, you read their prayer letters, and you've uh, seen the, the pictures. I'm trying to get him not to say slides, because we don't use slides anymore. I haven't used slides in probably 20 years, but nonetheless, uh, it's, it's, they are snippets not really of Gary and Pat, but there's snippets of the hand of God working in the Holy Land or in Kenya or in different places like that. And that's what really missions is about. That's the, the heart of it. And uh, we're thankful that uh, your pastor has a heart for the lost. Last week was, was what was special about last Sunday? A week ago, sanctity of life, wasn't it? How important life is. And we think of the unborn, but think of all of the lost who have gone on out of this world. We, we see the unborn, we understand the, the pictures and all those things going on. But what about the souls of those who look healthy and strong and educated and wise and rich and powerful and so forth, and they leave this earth without Christ? You know what happens. So the emphasis that we lay says, Lord, you know, from your word, you have, you have shown me these things. And, and, and for eight years, God has been pleased to pull men and women from various corners of the world and, and, and have a, a like precious faith and send them here and there. A door would open and a door would close. And we've had some of various ages from some teams with young people uh, all the way to retired uh, folks. Um, Dr. and Mrs. Jackson were... Uh, they, they were in their yeah, 70, early 80s when they went to Kenya to be the principal at the Bible College. So uh, God's doing marvelous things, and age doesn't matter. Um, uh, it's the heart that, that's really in, involved. So I encourage you. To, you've got a beautiful display uh, out in the hallway out here uh, with prayer letters and, and so forth. Uh, uh, for me to review everything that goes on, uh, I would miss something and then I would hear about it later on. So I'll, I'll put it upon you uh, to read and, and to pray. Uh, look at our website also. There's always things updated on that. Uh, PraySendGo.com. And uh, we're thankful that we have the privilege of, of being just a, a little sliver of uh, an opportunity to serve God in, in our day. Here you go. Thank you, Keith. I'll tell you what, I had the privilege of going down this last year, both to Brazil and then also to Chile, uh, to, to be with Jim and Melody and the Jadas. And I thought, oh, goodness sakes, I can't believe they would put two couples in the same town. Well, that was until I got to the town. My goodness, 
to go from one side of the town. It took us more than 30 minutes to go up to the Jada's church and to see the enthusiasm in both of those churches, how they, they were just, they were just growing. I, oh, oh, there was, there was problems. There sure were. I just prayed every time. Uh, that I, I went anywhere in Jim's car. Man, I tell you, I said, honey, I'm going to tell you right now, if, if we get all, all the way through and, and get on that plane, it's going to be a miracle in disguise. Well, we did get that far, but he almost didn't get back. And uh, so anyway, they have another car now. And I am, I called Keith. Keith, I'll tell you what, buddy, I just soon have a tricycle as, as have that. So anyway, they have a nice vehicle now. Their, their Sunday school is growing. Uh, it's just a wonderful. Oh, if you can get a chance to go down there, go. Because it is a delightful work. Seeing two different works, different congregations. You know what they do? They just all get a, Pastor, this is the way you do it. <clears throat> you just say, okay, everybody in the church is going to visit. Everybody, okay? And so all come out, and then they give Bibles and these little CDs and things like that. And then they just go to apartment buildings. They go to shops. They go everywhere. It's amazing. They just don't, they're just not afraid of anybody down there. And then the people are very nice. I got a McDonald's, by the way. And anyway, it is just fantastic, the work that's going on, and it's just growing and growing. I think, I know Jim's church had nearly 80 or more, and the other church, it was, it was coming up near that number. And I just was thrilled to be there in camp and things like that. Oh, the Lord is so good. And I got to, we got to see that work and, and, and it was going and, and really moving. And, and I, I, boy, I tell you, what a, what a wonderful time. Jonathan Jada and Jim Bjorn get together every week on a Monday, I think they said, and have a time of prayer uh, and, and knitting together. And, and they are just, they're just thrilled to do, and then they reach Peru. They preach up in Bolivia. They reach all of, oh, and Chile is big. You know that if, in, if you went from where Jim is all the way down, you would be beyond Hawaii. <clears throat> Long drive, Daniel. And, every, and so anyway, it is really wonderful to be able to see these missionaries that have a heart for God. They have a heart for souls. They want to see the church grow. They're standing for the fundamental faith. And so now we're going to turn to Matthew, the 13th chapter, just briefly, because my wife is just all ready to go. And uh, not quite the enthusiasm, but don't worry, she'll get it. And here we find a Mr. Grin. How many of you remember Mr. Grinstead? Boy, I tell you, the man I dear loved. And he would say, Gary, he said, if you're not born in uh, Indiana, th then you ought to be born again. And he said, if you you're born in Indiana, you ought to be born again. And you know, <laughs> he was right. He was a good farmer. I've been out there many times on that farm and all. And he did a good thing. And he said, you know, and he would refer to this passage of Matthew, the 13th chapter, where sower went forth to sow. And here we find there was a great multitude. And my dear ones, wherever you go, there's going to be a great multitude. I think this, the heaviest heart that I have is during near Ramadan, whenever the Muslims all gather together and they're, they're bowing towards Mecca and all these things and, and, or, or a holiday when they're all coming together. You know, when we were in Wingy many years ago with Marilyn and Fawcett's and, and, the, and, and um, many others, do you know that, you, you, that there was very few Muslims? Missionaries are gone. The, the, the mosque has doubled three times. And now, during these times, they can close the main street because they are bringing in so many converts. And I think, oh my goodness, a sower went forth to sow. Here we find here in this passage that it says, and when he had, verse 4, and when he had sown, some seeds fell on the waysides and fowls came and devoured them. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprang up because they had no depth, depthness of earth. 
And when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. Some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. And some fell in the good grounds and brought forth fruit. And a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. And then we find in verse 9, Who hath ears to hear? Let him hear. Lord, I pray that we will see how does this Are we the proper farmers to sow the seed? I hope we are. It doesn't matter how old we are or how young we are, we still need to sow the seed. And we thank you for the word of God that we have in Christ's name. Amen. You know, as you have known for the last three years, we've had terrible famine time in Kenya. We really have. Um... Keith and I have made many calls, gone out to the field, things like this. As soon as we arrive, we have beans, we have corn, and we even this time, Delray Nichols' mother bought um, pioneer corn that each pastor would be able to have uh, hybrid corn to be able to plant. Boy, I'll tell you, I'm sure glad we did it because they are now harvesting corn and they're harvesting beans. It's good. It's really good. That this time they're not going to we're not going to need to take famine money out to our area this time. But you know what I, I wonder? Do, is there a famine? Have we planted the seed? Or have we just gone out and and and, and made daisy chains? I'm sure you've heard that that one about the Tom Toms beating on all night and this this girl was just making daisy chains. Or the, the people were as this girl wanted to go out. My dear ones, we have a work to do. Places that was open to the independent board whenever I went out in 1965. Hmm, Sudan was wide open. Central African Republic was wide open. Uh, things, places like even Islamic countries were open. Not now. No, it's, it's much more difficult. India. When I went, they were just starting to close the doors on India. And, but you know what? I'm thankful for the nationals that have, were trained by the independent board missionaries that are still carrying on the guy quads and, and Mr. Epen and all like this. What a thrill it was to be able to see them at the ICC meetings. You know, are we sowing the word of God or are we just going to, you know, make someone better or teach a, a course in the Bible school or occasionally give a track or, or something like this? And you're going to say, well, you know, they, they've been reached so long. I mean, Robert and Neil went from this very, auto, uh, this, this church and they went out and, and they worked and, and they would get in their truck and they would go way up and do ladies meetings. You know, I remember those times when they would do that. And I also remember when I landed there in 1965, that the drums would beat on all night long. And, you, and we'd say, my goodness, how do they keep this up? And it just kept on going. You don't hear the drums so much anymore. You know why? Christianity has gone in there. The churches have been established. Um, oh, they don't necessarily count how many's in the church because they do something that, Pastor, we need to do. As a church starts growing, like we found in the Philippines, they let it get just so big, and then they say, you know, we've got some men here. We better go on and divide and go get another church. There's a certain area here in Manila that doesn't hardly have any Christian witness at all. We really need to go there. And this is the way they're, and this is the way they're doing even Africa. I, I couldn't believe this last time I was there, James Mongangi, who is the moderator of, of the uh, church, he, he, uh, of the, of the presbytery there, he said, Mr. Gary, I, there was this area right along the Mombasa Road. He said, uh, that, um, you know, it just didn't have any church. And the lady said, here, just come on over and I'll give you the land and let's just see how many, we can get. I know the lady very well. She made a stool for me one time to put my keyboard on. And I couldn't believe my eyes. I didn't, I was at so many churches when we were out there. I said, they said, well, you have to go to prayer meeting. 
Pastor, there was 26 in prayer meeting. There was no building. There was nothing to shed anything. And there was barely seats enough for the people. And the children was, were... I said, who's the one that's wearing this? Oh, the pastor's son who's 12 years old, Daniel. The pastor's son is leading this, but he doesn't preach. He leads the music. He encourages the people. He knows English and he knows Kikamba and some good Swahili. And he's growing into things. So, my dear ones, this is what we need to do with our children. We need to teach them to plant the seed. Good farmers. Very good farmers. My goodness, I said, well, who then preached? Oh, he said, as soon as I finish, as soon as I finish over at a Soviet church, where, where Danielle and them were, then you come over as fast as you can, either by bicycle or by motorcycle or whatever, and you get over to the church ready to just stand up there and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the new church. We're going to lay a foundation for that this time. We are. I mean, all we get is a foundation, but we're going to start it. Because you know what? They're already saying that they wanted to go another place. Oh, what good people to plant the seed. Good farmers, very good farmers. I just thank the Lord for the early missionaries. They told me the story when I got there, and with this I'm soon to be finished with my part. And that is that a missionary came up from Mombasa. He also had the same desires. He came up this road and many got malaria and passed on. I could take you to the graves where they, they would just come in. Some of them were one day old. Some had, were early in their 20s, just came from, from Germany and just came from England. And, and I can ch- take you to the grave where they, where they laid. But they kept on coming because they had the desire to plant the seed. And they came up there. And this one man came and he made a stick, a stick school because there was no school in that whole part of Ukambani. There was no schools at all. And he said, we definitely need to have schools so that they can learn to read the word of God. And he sat there and he visited homes and he visited the villages and he said, please come on out and, and I'll teach you how to read. And they laughed and they laughed. <laughs> we don't need to read. We just need to plant. You know, we eat beans and corn and corn and beans. And, you know, that's about what we do. Oh, my goodness. He did get discouraged after a while. And he moved on up to Malongo. Keith's been there, to Malongo. It's got an orphanage now. It's got an AIC school. They're begging me to come and, and teach at the AIC school because they said, you've been here a long time. You know our people. You know our customs. You know our language and things like that. Please just come. Come on up here and teach our men to plant the seed. My dear ones, that's what we need. We need that more than anything in all the world. The people to go out and go and plant the seed of the word of God. Stand on the fundamentals of the faith. You can, you can call this guy over here, you know. He'll, he'll, he'll take the call. And he'll be able to say, line you up with a some team getting ready to go or something like this. We already have, well, as of yesterday, there's a certain lady here that says she wants to go. And that made number 11. And I'm, I'm asking the Lord for 14. And we could go out there and we can have a big start in July. We're going to do it in July. The 8th of July. We're going to go the 10th of August. We're going to do some planting of seeds that the word of God, as it goes into the good ground and some not so good, but we can learn to cultivate and we can learn to ask the, our nationals to help us or we'll help them. Lord, thank you for the farmers that go out to the field and plant the seed. And for those back here who helps them go, for those who pray and, and just over what may happen, because we're getting soon ready to soon have an election, and we don't know what's going to happen, and the Christians could be hurt, but Lord, we know that You say, Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. And I thank that your word is true and amen. 
We pray that I would just bless and guide as we see what happened even this, just this year. We thank you for letting us go in Christ Jesus' precious name. Amen.